If you find this video useful, remember to click like and subscribe. And for more information about all our resources and revision courses that we do, go to alevelmathsrevision.com. So bridging the gap tutorial number 10 is going to be on algebraic fractions. And this is one thing that I see loads of GCSE students when transitioning to A-level go wrong with. So the first thing I want to concentrate on is the idea of this magic term that we've heard called cancelling when it comes to fractions. So let's take this example here. And it says simplify x squared plus x over x plus 1. Now so many times I've seen students say, well the x's just cancel like that. And that tells me that you've got the wrong idea of what cancellation actually means. So I'm going to try and reword and help you gain a deeper understanding of what cancellation actually means. So to me, what cancellation means is that somewhere in that expression, there's a hidden factor of 1. And we've got to try and unlock that factor of 1. So only if there's a hidden factor of 1 can we, in inverted commas, cancel. So I can see that the top cancels both have a factor of x in common. So... That becomes x bracket x plus 1 over x plus 1. I'm starting to see the hidden factor of 1 come out. But to really exaggerate that, I can rewrite this fraction in a different way. I can call it x plus 1 over x plus 1 times x. So here I can see on the top the x plus 1 times is by x to give x x plus 1 and the bottom times is by that hidden one there so that's like saying x over 1 but we typically don't write it so now that we've written it like this and if you're convinced that this here is identical to this here they both say exactly the same thing then notice we've got an x plus 1 over x plus 1 here well that there is just 1 and if we times something by 1, we just get itself. So we might as well not write this bit here at all. And for me, that's a sure way never to get cancellation wrong. Factorise it, reorder the fraction, so that you end up with a something over itself at the front. So let's try another. So let's try this one here. So simplify x squared plus 6x plus 8 over x squared plus 8x plus 16. So first of all, let's factorise it. So I know you by this I know that by this point you know how to factorize quadratics. So that's x plus 2, x plus 4 on the top. All divided by and on the bottom we've got x plus 4, x plus 4. Right, so now we reorder this fraction so that at the front we've got something over itself. So x plus 4 over x plus 4 times, and left over we've got x plus 2 over x plus 4. And I can see here, and just convince yourself that this line here is the same as this line, and this one is the same as this one. So by splitting up the fraction in that way, I can say I've got a 1 times something at the front. So I might as well not have written that at all. 1 times anything is just itself. So then let's conclude with our answer, x plus 2 over x plus 4. Now again, a common error at this point would be to say, and what I'm about to do is wrong, I'll spell out this is wrong, what I'm about to do, because this here is the correct answer. Some people will try and further simplify this correct answer by saying, well, the x's cancel, but that's not the case. The only way we would be able to do that is if at the front we could get an x over x times something then the x's would cancel because x over x is 1. Cancellation means hidden multiple of 1, in my opinion. So let's move on to another more complicated example now. So you've probably gathered by this point that factorisation is the key. So this example here express those two fractions there with a subtraction in the middle as a single fraction in its simplest form. So you'll know when doing algebraic fractions and numerical fractions that to add or subtract fractions, we need to find a common denominator. However, you should notice that this here will factorise. It's the difference of two squares. So if I just rewrite this out again, but fully factorising it first, 
it's probably going to make it a lot simpler. A lot of questions are designed to be made simpler by a factorization. So 3x plus 2 with a 2 at the front. And we want to factorize the denominator here. 9x squared minus 4. And hopefully you can spot that. That's the difference of two squares. So 3x plus 2. 3x minus 2. If you need more practice with factorizing quadratics, go back to me. Uh, tutorial on factorizing quadratics. So take away 2 over 3x plus 1. And this here, let's just take it to the side. So what I want to do is I want to reorder this so that a hidden factor of 1 becomes apparent. So if I bring the 3x plus 2 to the front, because it doesn't matter which order I times two numbers in, you'll still get the same answer. And I'll take this 3x plus 2 to the front as well. So now I've got this fraction here. 3x plus 2 over 3x plus 2. Times 2 over 3x minus 2. Well this is just a factor of 1. A number over itself. Therefore we might as well not write it all. And again that's what cancelling is. Finding a hidden factor of 1. So we've realised that we can write this first term as 2 over 3x minus 2, take 2 over 3x plus 1. By the way, quite often you'll uh, you'll see people do that for cancellation as well. Once you're comfortable enough with the idea of cancellation, maybe you should do that. But for now, think of it as bringing to the front a hidden factor of 1. Right, so let's find a common denominator of these fractions because to subtract fractions, you need to find a common denominator. Well, in this case, the common denominator is found by multiplying both denominators together. So we've got 3x minus 2, 3x plus 1. That's the common denominator. Now, the first fraction, we times the bottom by 3x plus 1. So to make sure that we don't adjust the value of the fraction, we need to times the top by the same thing as well. Much like with numerical fractions, if I times the top by 2, in order for the fraction to maintain the same value of 3 quarters, in order to remain an equivalent fraction, 8 times the bottom by 2 as well. Same thing goes here. I've multiplied, in this case, the denominator by 3x plus 1. So I need to times the numerator by 3x plus 1 as well. So two lots of 3x plus 1. Then there's a take sign. Then on this fraction, I multiplied the denominator by 3x minus 2. It already had the 3x plus 1, so I multiply by 3x minus 2 to get the common denominator. So it stands to reason I need to multiply the top by 3x minus 2 also. Okay, then simplifying that, I get 6x plus 2 on the numerator. Take 6x. Be careful here because there's a double minus. Minus 2 times minus 2 is plus 4. All divided by 3x minus 2, 3x plus 1 equals, and we can see that 6x takes 6x is 0, 2 plus 4 leaves 6, all over 3x minus 2, 3x plus 1. And we don't multiply the denominators out. And this is a really important point. Don't multiply the denominators out. Factorised is better. So let's do another type of example. So this one gives us a function h of x. And it's saying that that's equal to 2 over x plus 2 plus 4 over x squared plus 5 minus 18 over x squared plus 5 x plus 2. So what we need to do is find a common denominator for all three of these fractions. Well, if I have a look at this, this has a factor of x squared plus 5 and x plus 2. So, if I times both the top and bottom of this one by x plus 2, then I get the same common denominator. Likewise, if I times both the top and bottom of this by x squared plus 5, I get an equivalent fraction, but again, with a common denominator. So, let's just set this fraction up. I've already identified my common denominator. It is x plus 2, x squared plus 5. So x 
plus 2 x squared plus 5 is my common denominator. So the first one I times by x squared plus 5 over x squared plus 5. So that gives me, so I times the bottom by x squared plus 5, I have to times the top by x squared plus 5 as well. So it gives me 2 x squared plus 5. For the next one, I times the bottom by x plus 2. So I need to times the top by x plus 2 as well. And the third one already has the common denominator, so I don't need to do anything to it. So that's equal to that. So multiply out the numerator now. Now remember I said don't ever multiply out the denominator. That's because that's fully factorised. I, I am going to multiply out the numerator because it's not, it's not a single... Um, expression connected by multiplications it's connected by pluses and minuses which means that it's not factorized if it was just a number of brackets attached to each other by time signs then it would be fully factorized so 2x squared plus 10 plus 4x plus 8 minus 18 all over the denominator which is x plus 2, x squared plus 5, equals. So I notice here that 10 plus 8 is 18. So 18 take 18 is 0. So I might as well, rather than try to add those up, just cross them out. So equals. So 2x squared plus 4x. I notice that they've got a factor of 2x in common. Fully factorised is better. So that becomes x plus 2 there. All divided by x plus 2 x squared plus 5. And if I want to reorder this, I can notice that I put uh, I can put the x plus 2's to the front. And that's multiplied by 2x over x squared plus 5. And having fully factorised and reordered the fraction, I can see that there's a cancellation can happen because there's a thing divided by itself at the front. There's a hidden factor of 1 there. So I'll cross that out. And that simply gives me what we were asked to show, 2x over x squared plus 5. So let's try another and this one again illustrates how important factorising denominators is. So let's try this one here, express that as a single fraction in its simplest form. So factorisation is always the key. So I need to combine them now. Now what a lot of people would do is to times these together to get a common denominator but quite often in these questions we'll find that this one here will factorise to give another factor. Uh, that already appears in the question. So, we've got 3x plus 5, all divided by, and this becomes x plus 4, x minus 3, when we factorise, and my suspicions were well founded, because I can see that it's got a factor of x minus 3, there and there, which is going to make it a lot easier to find the common denominator for. So now, I can see that my common denominator is going to be found by timesing this one here by x plus 4 over x plus 4. So we've got there my 3x plus 5. And here's my common denominator x plus 4, x minus 3. So to get the common denominator, I times this by x plus 4. So I have to times that by x plus 4 as well, so as not to change the value of the fraction. which is equal to 3x plus 5 minus 2x minus 8. Don't forget that. That's a minus sign at the front. All divided by x plus 4, x minus 3. Which is equal to, so 3x minus 2x is x. 5 minus 8 is minus 3, all divided by x plus 4, x minus 3,
equals and I can take this out to the front x minus 3 over x minus 3 change the order in which we do the multiplications times 1 over x plus 4 and I can see this hidden factor of 1 is made more obvious now that's what cancelling is I can't stress that enough finding a hidden factor of 1 equals 1 over x plus 4 which is the answer so hopefully you found that useful but if you take anything away from this tutorial make sure it's that idea of cancelling being reordering of a fraction reordering of the order in which you times things in a fraction to try and make obvious a hidden factor of one for more videos like this subscribe to our youtube channel and to find out more about our skype tuition and revision courses go to a-levelmathsrevision.com